What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video as you see from the title. Today we have the recently announced National Player of the Year, National High School Boys Basketball Player of the Year, recently announced McDonald's All-American. This is a Kansas signee, 6'7 wing, Grady Dick. This player, you know, I actually came across him on Instagram. I think it was even before I even started doing breakdowns. Saw a couple clips of him, I'm like, who is this kid? He looked like he got some size and he can go a little bit. Instantly, of course, go to YouTube, search him up watch a couple highlight tapes and I obviously, you know, when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he gonna be nice, right? Cause I said this was before I even started doing the breakdown. So it had to be like over a year ago. So I won't, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot about him. You know, I knew he played for Sunrise Christian, but I still wasn't seeing a whole lot of him on my feed on Instagram or he wasn't popping up on YouTube like that. And then obviously recently he was just announced that he was the national player of the year. And I'm not sure, I can't really remember off the top of my head the other finalists, but I know one finalist, one other finalist was Dariq, Dariq Whitehead that plays for Montverde. And in my head, you know, at some point we might come with that new revamped 2022 top 10. We also are coming with that 2023 top 10 pretty soon. But in my head, when I saw he won National Player of the Year, I'm like, okay, you know, I know what Dariq has, has done this year. We've done a lot of breakdowns on him. I know the type of player, the type of talent that that kid is. And he's a leader, everything, complete package. So I'm like, okay, what did Grady do this year that caused the committee, whoever voted, to make him the national player of the year? So I'm like, okay, instantly I'm like, okay, we got to do a breakdown because I got to see why is he winning this over Dariq. I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. Grady did. Most don't realize this, but Grady is a pretty decent athlete who can finish above the rim when need be. Even though Grady's game is predicated on his shooting ability, he can put it down from time to time. And when he does, he finds creative ways to get around his defender and finish at the rim. Grady is a 6'7 shooter who can knock down shots from all over the floor in a lot of different ways. As you can see here, he catches it off the handoff, bucket, and even on this next possession, he sets a ghost screen, and once he has his feet set and you'll give him room, count it. Grady can not only shoot it off the catch, he can also shoot it off the dribble. I want everyone to notice the defensive attention he's garnering, and he still creates the space for himself and knocks it down. Again, this is the type of player that you can't give an inch of space to on the perimeter. At 6'7", Grady can get a shot off against anyone when given the time. And even on this next play, you have 6'6", Dariq Whitehead getting a great closeout, and he still gets the shot off. Bucket. Like I said before, when Grady does put it down, he can create space for himself. And again, this is 6'8", plus athlete Dylan Mitchell on him. Doesn't matter. Bucket. This is a shooter shooter who can knock down shots from anywhere on the perimeter. Hesitancy on the ball screen and he sees the rim. Tracy, and I want you guys to see where he shoots this next one from, even with the contest. Crazy. He missed this shot, but I want you guys to see the definition of having no conscience as a shooter. When you have a player who's willing to take this, even with a 6'8 defender in his face, it's hard to guard. This is also a picture-perfect example of how a shooter should run the baseline to get open. And again, any type of space. Okay, so Grady. Right, let's clear this up. Grady did win the Gatorade, you know, Boys Basketball National Player of the Year. Dariq won, you know, Naismith, right? The Naismith Player of the Year. But Gatorade is usually the one that has all the noise, all the hype. You see the commercials everywhere, right? And after you saw the breakdown and after I watched the film, you know, I started to understand, okay, why Grady won the Gatorade National Player of the Year over Dariq. You know, let's talk about it, right? So we've done a lot of team breakdowns. Oak Hill, IMG, go check them out if you haven't seen them. You know, we've done breakdowns on a lot of the top, you know, prep teams, right? So you understand what these rosters look like. So if you compare Sunrise Christian to Montverde's roster, they both have highly ranked players, but Montverde's has, you know, top of the top, creme de creme, you know what I'm saying? They're top, top highly ranked players, right? So, you know, they're kind of, they're, they're supposed to win a lot of these games because they're just kind of over talented, way more talented than a lot of other teams. Sunrise Christian, not to say that they don't have ranked players because they do, just not as many as some of these, like I said, uh, Montverde or uh, IMG, right, or Oak Hill. They don't have that. So for a Sunrise Christian to go, what, they went 24 and 1, to go 24 and 1, playing these teams head to head. And a lot of these games, they it, the game wasn't close. And like I said, they have ranked players, but they aren't ranked that high. And Grady in these games, in these head to head matchups, He's putting up numbers. He's putting up 20s, 18s, being the leading scorer in all of these games. And again, they went 24 and 1. It's kind of like in the league, right? Usually, usually the MVP is going to be the best player on the best team, right? It's kind of like the same thing here. They went 24 and 1. I'm pretty sure they finished the season ranked number one in the country. He was the best player on that team and put up numbers against everybody, which is why he, 
I understand now why he was uh, named Gatorade Player of the Year. But let's just talk about his game and why. You know, what did he do on the court to earn that award, right? So Grady, you know, for you know certain players, for most players, right? I go and I check for. I'm looking for a game where you were really on, where you were clicking, you hitting all your shots. And I'm looking for a game where, okay, maybe the shots weren't falling, but I want to see what you look like when your jumper isn't, isn't hitting. Like, okay, do you start to attack the rim? Do you just try and find your teammates? With Grady, because he won player of the year, because he's ranked number eight and he just shot up the rankings, shot up the rankings, I went and I went straight for the matchups. I went straight and I, I looked at the IMG game and I looked at the Montverde game because those are the high major, there's high major talent on both teams, highly competitive. So when I turned on the game and I see this six foot seven high schooler pulling from NBA three and he's hitting them with some consistency. And I'm and I'm talking about against both teams. And then these are high level defenders, high level athletes. My eyes were open. I'm like, OK, OK, I, I understand now. Like for him as a shooter, this is I said in the breakdown, this is a shooter shooter. His game is predicated on shooting. He's going to shoot the ball if you give this dude any type of space at 6'7". He can get a shot off against anybody. You saw Derek is 6'6", and a freak athlete. Hand right here at 6'7", Grady can still elevate and get the shot off. He has Dylan Mitchell, 6'8", freak athlete. Freak athlete, we're going to come with his breakdown soon. You know, and he's still, he's guarding him one-on-one, -on -one, takes a step back. Dylan, literally, right here, hand in his face, can still knock it down. Or... You know what I'm saying? He hits the deep three over Dylan, or even the one that he missed. I just wanted to show you guys, like, a player that has the guts to take shots like that from that deep, that's extremely hard to guard, right? You know, and I know a lot of people are like, why would he shoot up the rankings, right? All he is is a shooter. All he does is shoot the ball, right? I showed you guys he does put it down from time to time. Granted, you know, sometimes when he does try to dribble a little too much, he might make a bad read, turn the ball over, you know, just trying to, like, handle that pressure, but for the most part, he does make pretty decent reads when he puts it down, And but he knows his role. Remember what I always tell you guys, guys, be a star in your role. Grady understands that, and his game is translatable right now, today, today, which is why he shot up the rankings, which is why he's player of the year, which is why he is, you know, as highly touted as he is, because in college, we've talked about this before, right? That transition period from high school senior to freshman in college, it's something I'm here to tell you firsthand. It's something you, it's something different. It's something entirely different, right? It even just, not even just physically, but just your game. All of a sudden you might be used to getting by somebody. All of a sudden you can't get by anybody in practice because they're the same level athlete you are. You used to being able to finish at the rim or finish above people. All of a sudden you got a 6'10 big who got a 40 or you got somebody like me and I'm blocking that. It's hard when you got a shooter at six foot seven and you see how he he runs, sprints the baseline. He he sets ghost screens to get open. He does all of this. This is instantly translatable. Instantly translatable. It's not going to be. He's not going to have to learn how to you know come off a come off a pin down just to get open. He already understands that. He knows how to. He knows the footwork. This dude is showing how he can come off a handoff one two left right and pull up bucket from deep. Okay, they want to run me off the line. One dribble, side pull. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, I can still shoot it off balance, leaning to the side. He can make shots from all over the floor. One thing that they always say, shooting always translates. Shooting always translates. He did also compete on defense. I saw him try and get rebounds, things like that. But this player right here is a six foot seven shooter. Six foot seven wing shooter. He's gonna be hard to stop. He looks like he wants to shoot it from half. If you do not pick him up from half. He's a threat to shoot it. And from what I'm seeing in these high-level matchups, again, I want everyone to make sure you understand who he's playing against. I picked the, you know, the best matchups, the hardest games it should have been. But he had, I think he had 20 against Montverde, 16 against IMG, or maybe it was Flip. Leading score in both of those games, and his team won both of those games. These are against high-level players, high-level talent. And he's just showing he belongs on that level. He belongs... His ranking belongs, you know, that high. There's a reason why he shot up that high. There's a reason why he won Gatorade Player of the Year. I'm excited to see because, like, it's shooting translates. And at that size, 6'7 wing, I always say this because I was told this when I was younger. If you're 6'7 and above and can shoot 40% um, from three, 
there's a three-letter league that needs your services. That's all I'm going to say. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Remember, you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluation. Subscribe to Breakdowns that go on the channel. Hit the website. Just say appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time with the next video.